Welcome to Combo Fango. Today we are joined by the co-director of The Passenger, Fernando Gonzalez Gomez. Yay! Hello! <laughs> Hello, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you very much uh, for having me. So I was very excited for this when I saw the trailers. Um, it looked proper disgusting. And then I watched the movie and it's fucking disgusting. And I mean that in, in the most complimentary way. <laughs> You know, you know, we love this term about the movie, mm -hmm. this adjective, uh, the disgusting one. Uh, <laughs> we we love a lot because because the agreement is between dark star and bloody disgusting. <laughs> we always <laughs> say that our movie is disgusting. Then it's it's fun. It's fun to hear uh, the adjective about the movie. Very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> so tell us tell us what the passenger is about. Well, it's about uh, four strangers uh, that are sharing a car using an app that is very common in Spain. The app is called Blah Blah Car. And then the, you, you can share your, your trip to somewhere and then you share the gas or, or some cost uh, of the trip. And then they are sharing the, the van. They are totally strangers. And in a moment of their trip, uh, in the middle of the forest, they hit uh, a woman that is walking alone in the middle of the night uh, and well uh, they decided to 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 try to to, to put inside the, the vehicle and then go to the nearest uh, hospital but it was bad idea <laughs> and i'm gonna finish there and no more was... spoilers please okay it was a mistake <laughs> yes it was a mistake sure totally totally okay. it's the conclusion is the conclusion at the end. <laughs> if I say a spoiler, because I'm only going to, I'm saying things that are in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler, but if you feel it's a spoiler, yell at me and then we'll cut it out later. <laughs> well, the question, the question is, it, it, there's some different trailers because we are in, in different markets. Mm -hmm. Then every distributor uh, made like their own trailer. And there okay. is some trailers that are more, less spoiling and another one that are a uh, lot of spoilers and i think the red brand trailer in the states is crazy <laughs> spoiler it, it <laughs> is but it is it is bad. But it, okay. didn't, it okay. didn't ruin the movie for me though like honestly that's what enticed me to see it because i was like oh this is gross like what is this all about and that it didn't in watching the movie it's, i didn't feel like it took anything away f for me at least it's always <laughs> it's always same dilemma uh the problem is that we get, we have to show the highlights Mm -hmm. But if you show the highlights, you are giving a spoiler to the audience. But if you don't show the highlights, who is going to watch your movie? Because if you, sh I mean, if we focus only in the daily trip of our friends <laughs> having fun driving through the forest, uh, who is going to go? <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. It's like a, a, a no, standard <laughs> comedy, no? That's a very different movie, especially depending on the music that you put over the trailer. <laughs> you use upbeat music for the trailer and only show a buddy road trip. Very different movie. And probably some 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 people is going to to get crazy when we arrive to the to the to the theater and they see aliens and things coming from the sky. Yes. So I will say I do I do love a good double entendre. I love double meanings. The title itself, The Passenger. You're focused on a driver as our main character, and they're using a ride-sharing app, so he's got passengers in his van, but also we're dealing with aliens and parasites and kind of a body snatcher situation, so the the people themselves become passengers for these alien parasites, which I, I love that. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we spend a lot of time, I mean, was written on the screenplay with uh, by by Luis Sanchez Polak, mm -hmm. but Raúl and I we we love the part of the movie where you when you empathize empathize with the with the characters mm -hmm. and you and you are knowing where are they coming why I why, why they are there what they are sharing a van where where are they uh, going I mean all their histories all all the histories of these characters and all their relationships and, and the relations in between in, in order to to to, to as, as you said be in the trip with them and then suffer with them and love with them i mean everything with like in inside the 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 the, the van like uh, like uh, one of the the passengers no not be like a voyeur uh, audience just watching things happening to the to the characters and you doesn't matter what they are doing or what what they are happening or what what is happening because okay you doesn't matter because you don't know the characters 
Right. But we was really focusing present the characters, and and, and we spent like uh, I don't know nearly twenty five minutes of the film just in the trip with the characters, knowing more about them. And it is like the audience is a member of this road trip because we're meeting as they're meeting each other, we're meeting them, and we're kind. It's it's kind of like making the small talk that you would make if you were a passenger on this trip and getting to know like oh, where are you headed and why are you going there? A little bit like a Wizard of Oz thing. They all have the same destination, but they all have very specific reasons for going to this destination. That's it. That's it. Exactly. exactly. We, we were really focusing on know why they are there. What, what are the reasons to, to share this trip? And then uh, starting in that point, everything, everything is starting to be, uh, well, okay. <laughs> not not good for the for the passengers. Not not great. It's not like not, not great. great. Not great. It's not looking <laughs> great. Okay. That's it. Um, the main character, our driver, is an interesting character because we meet him and he's a little. We'll call him. He's a little old school. You know, he's got a little bit of old school sensibilities. But he's in a van full of strong modern women. So there's this clash that's happening. <laughs> this is the first. The first. The, the first fight. The first yeah. fight is not. In between the alien and 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 Blasco and the and the passengers, it, it, the first fight is between him and and his education and his way of see the life. And in, a, in a, like like as you said, it, it, it's, he's a man from the past. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he's a man that is is, is not adapting the the, the modern uh, education, and he's not correct. He's politically incorrect. But I mean. Uh, at the end, we it, it's nice because there is a lot of people that hate Blasco in the first <laughs> 10 minutes of the movie. And they are starting to love Blasco a little bit more, more step by step, because, I mean, you said, OK, he's old school. He's not nice. He has some uh, way of seeing the life that are not correct. He's politically, politically incorrect, but he has like a good uh, button. No, he has some mm -hmm. good feelings inside. He's, he's not a bad guy in, at the end. Yeah. And it's an interesting character because I guess it kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, when you have like an uncle or something who's like kind of old school and you're like, oh, you're a little kind of gross. Like some of the things you say are kind of gross, but there's something yeah. in them where it's like, I don't hate you. I think you're kind of gross and you like, you have some work I, I to think, do, I but think I don't you are, hate you. Are, <laughs> yeah, just, just you are incorrect. You don't know that you are being incorrect. Because right. your education, because whatever, you, you don't know. Someone has to explain you that you are not being correct. It's an ignorance someone, someone had to, to, Yeah, that's it. Someone has to learn you how, yeah. how, how you have to, to, to say the things or what things are correct or not. <laughs> or, or, or that's it. He says something and you're just like, mm, 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 no, don't, don't, just I'm stop you. Don't do that, please. Stop. <laughs> please stop. Let me just get the please. duct tape and just please stop. <laughs> don't say, don't say more. Don't say more. Stop. Yeah. You know, you know that that the, the, the first part of the movie when when he's talking to the Mexican uh, girl alone in the well, like the first ten minutes, uh, in the uh, script is it's longer. I mean, also we shoot it longer. There is mm, like I don't know five minutes more of text mm. with jokes in between the Mexican and Blasco, but we decided like as you said, okay, I think this is enough Blasco for today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move. But we are now doing a limited edition DVD in Spain and Blu-ray. And in this, is, we are going to, to share to the audience the, the, this uh, <laughs> amounts of, of, uh, of text of Blasco at the, at the very first uh, part of the movie. Nice. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because I feel like maybe for Blasco, less is more. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. But it's quite fun. It's quite fun because there is some moments when the Mexican says, what are you saying? And blah, blah, blah. And they say <laughs> a, a, a good text and they are, they are incredible, incredible, incredible good. I mean, uh, in, in, in their characters in, in that moment. And it's, it's nice to, to, to see the actors working in that way. Yeah, it was fun to see all the women call him out on his shit, though. Like, they didn't let him get away with anything. Like, he's saying something, and they just are like, the fuck? Like, no. Like, absolutely no. No. And there, is, there, is a, there is a moment also that she said, okay, let's see the, 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 the through the window, because it's, it's nothing. <laughs> we don't yeah. want to, to discuss with this guy, because there is no, no way to, to explain nothing. It's, it's right. like that. Okay. Okay. Leave, leave him. <laughs> leave him. Yeah. So talk to us a bit about the creature effects because that was really fun is like the the aliens because there's 
there's a lot happening. When we first see the aliens, it's these weird little like fingery looking things. There's a lot of fingernail horror happening. There's yes. the disgust. It's very phallic, like it's throwing really up, and throwing up like long, like blah, like it's gross, but it's fun. Yes. <laughs> Well, it's a combination in between uh, real effects and BFX. Uh, the real ones was made. I don't. I don't know if you know a movie called Rec. It's a Spanish one with zombies. I mean, the Rec is like a recording Rec. Okay, oh, if you yes. didn't watch it, it's, it's nice. I, I don't know the title in 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 the in the states, but it's, it's same, directed by Jaume Balaguerro and Paco Plaza. And, uh, and the same team that made all these uh, zombie characters in that movie uh, work with us with the, with the passenger and they made like a lot of uh, creatures. I mean, the ending creature, the creature when they um, stop at the, when they see the, the, the sheep that have the accident and, and then the girl is, is going to touch something. <laughs> all these are really uh, real creatures uh, made it, um, uh, with like uh, five operators moving different Whoa. things, blowing air <laughs> in order to, to, to make them alive. And that was really, really nice to work with, with David and Beat in side effects. And the digital part was made by uh, User T38, that is a company that made the effects for of Color Out of Space. Wow. Nicolas okay. Page. Then they are uh, well known, they are experts, and they made a really crazy good work with the BFX. But, you know, Raul and I, uh, I mean, more Raul than me, Raul is a crazy fan of Carpenter's first work and all this, mm -hmm. this shit. <laughs> He's like <laughs> crazy about it. And then we decided, okay, let's go because we, we, have, we have this a movie with this smell, uh, with these feelings. Let's go for, um, for a physical one, okay? Until we cannot. I mean, we, we had a meeting with the team of BFX, with the team of the physicals and, and, and makeup, everyone. And we said, okay, in what moment we are not able to do it physically? In what moment is impossible in order because you can make the creature, but if the creature has to jump three meters, okay, in the, in the moment it's going to jump, it's no, no way, we need to go digitally. Or the moment when we have this like a, a snake coming through the mouth, uh, well, in, in the first moment it's, it's, it's digital, but in the moment when he catch it, it's real one, they, mm -hmm. they manufacture, then it's, it's nice. It's nice to to work with with this combination. I mean, I think the combination is the the correct way to do it. Not everything physically because it, it doesn't work, but not everything digital because I mean you don't feel the, the the taste. You don't feel. I mean, you cannot feel the the incredible smell of all these sheets on sets <laughs> <laughs> because the latex the latex combination. Uh, I mean, uh, in, in this small band, you know, was uh, crazy. And, and the camera team was, uh, okay, very upset. <laughs> <laughs> was very upset. Yes, because of that. They said, why you don't make digitally? We can, we are not, we, we don't need to smell all this shit <laughs> inside the band. Uh, but well, was was nice. Also, also was nice with Raúl Castillo, the concept art as, artist that we work a lot, Raúl and I, in order to develop the different fas, faces faces of the of the creature. Like, okay, when it's inside the ship, what is this? What happened when when it goes inside a, a girl? And what is the evolution in inside the girl? Mm -hmm. And then there is a lot of drawings that I think are, are going to come out in the special edition, I don't know, in September by, by Dark Star in the States, because they are going to make like a special edition or something with some of those art drawings that you can see the, the brain with the with the alien controlling <laughs> the brain and all, all this shit. I mean, we, we designed everything. You don't see everything in the movie because it's not in the movie, but we need to understand. And in order to understand, uh, Raul and I as directors, uh, we want to know everything about the creature and how it works and how it feels and how, everything. Right. I love that so much. I love that you guys went in depth too. Like even if it wasn't going to show up on screen, like you needed to know the backstory and you needed to know the logistics of how these things work, how they control you. Yes, because if you if you don't trust in your story or you don't understand your mm -hmm. story, you, it's impossible that you tell a good story right. because you're going to have like uh, blank spaces. Because someone is going to ask, ah, oh, but the creature, what he said? And say, I can explain you. The creature do this and this and this. <laughs> yeah, Everything. that's when you get loopholes is when you don't know that stuff. So you cover your basis. Yeah, and yeah. now when someone asks a question, Everything. you can go into the we history have to be of covered. these creatures. We yeah. have to be covered. We cover ourselves. 
<laughs> I'm very morbidly curious about this smell that you're talking about, though. Like, I wish you guys could, like, bottle it and then, like, make make passenger candles or something that smell like the van. Yes, probably. It could be a good idea. I got to talk with, <laughs> with David. If they have uh, some, uh, I don't know, some stock material from the movie, as <laughs> yeah. we can make so. You can you can smell do do you want to smell the the real smell of Nessa? Here it is, the real smell. Oh oh the Nessa. Oh the Nessa. Also you can Limited edition oh the Nessa. You've got candles <laughs> that you can it, burn that's... while you're watching the movie, spray yourself down, a little spritz. Everything. Everything for, for the bathroom and that's it. All, I, all. I don't imagine it being a pleasant smell, but I'm morbidly curious. <laughs> yeah, well if you if you smell your curiosity is going to Finish. <laughs> so this obviously has like really fun elements of like 50s and 60s sci-fi with like kind of like body snatchers kind of vibes going on but there's like a moment like when shit starts to get really crazy the style and the tone kind of shifts to like this really fun what, what i love really fun like 80s kind of horror like the lighting choices and like weird fun angles and just the way things are cut together very reminiscent of 80s horror did you guys have any specific inspirations that you were thinking about when you went into this not a specific uh, because we always said that uh, probably we are influ in i mean we have influences from all the movies that we watch during our lives that are a lot <laughs> uh -huh. probably we have like this unconscious influences Right. Like you, you, you are not feeling that you are having the influence, but you are having the influence, mm -hmm. and, and you and you watch it later. I mean, uh, we 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 focus in the screenplay, and we show this, as you say, this change of tone. Mm -hmm. The first uh, act is more like a daily comedy with some black humor, and I mean all this cartoon. And step by step, everything is starting changing. Even at the end, that is like a western. I mean, the very end. Yeah. Uh, then we work with Nacho Aguilar, the OP, uh, in order also to, to, to change the, the lighting way, the coloring, and, and also, in our case, the position of the camera, how to express that everything is going to, that bad things are going to happen with the camera. I mean, you see, when, when, when they have the accident, you see Blasco and Marta, and you think that everything, they think that everything is it's finished. And they are talking about put some music and they are starting to dancing, but we make like a shot like this that we are mm -hmm. saying something is going to be wrong because the things are not calm. Right. Uh, it's, it's, everything is not finished. Then we, we work a lot in, in that way in order to change the tone, but not only with the characters, not only uh, with the light, also with the camera. I mean, everything uh, was designed in order to to, to, to bring these feelings to the audience, to bring that they are entering in a different movie. No different movie because the tone stay the same, but it's a different tone. We, we work a lot with the tone, with the characters, because you pass through the black comedy to a drama moment, to a terror moment, to a thriller, then it's difficult where to start. No, If you start like in a very high comedy concept, it's not going to work the drama moments. Mm -hmm. Then we, we work it a lot, this, this and, and I think that we... Well, we, we, we did it. I don't know if we did it well, but we did it. Yeah. It's, no, you it's did. finished. It's released. <laughs> it's already released. It's in your fans, audience. Okay. You said you and yourself. it's a movie. That's what you just said. <laughs> That's it. No, That's no. It. you definitely have the bass tone and then you have the different notes, but it, it plays really well together because it's still, it's still held together by that glue of that, that bass tone that we start out with and establish, but then it has those oh, fun little notes throughout where it changes and switches up a bit. And it's, it makes it really fun. Like for me at least, because it touches upon like some of my favorite stuff that I grew up with, you know. It's, it's, it's nice when, when we hear some, some, some reviews that they said some influences that they are watching Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they says or they or they, they they says okay this is reminds me too and even me or raul didn't watch it then <laughs> there is no way <laughs> to to have influence from something that we never watched but okay it's it's nice it's nice it's nice to hear some influence and others are i mean obviously i mean carpenter the thing uh, body scratchers or um or also the, the Prince of the, of the Darkness, or I mean, there are some that are obvious that are there, or the, the first works of Peter Jackson, the movements of the camera. I remember 
there is a, a movement of the camera that we came from the back to the front and we call it the Peter Jackson one. I mean, okay. Okay, Evil Dead, Evil Dead, when we are going through the forest with the camera, uh -huh. like, like first view. Okay, there is some that are obvious, but there is a lot of more that the, the people bring to us and we said, okay, yeah. Sure, all right. Sure. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I Main love influence. That so much. Yeah, you're all, yes, add that to the list. You guys just have this like scroll <laughs> that you <laughs> unfurl. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, like yeah. list them off and now in interviews you just read the yes. whole list off. yes we have we have everything everything every everything influences <laughs> yeah. us it's all in there it's all living in you subconsciously and comes out even yes, the ones you haven't it. seen <laughs> even even those it's, it's, it's really strange you just osmosis you've absorbed it at some point in in life totally. and it just comes totally. out in your work <laughs> totally by the skin even yes. with no watching <laughs> Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we go? No, uh, no more. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your time. For us, it's a pleasure to be to be here. Uh, pleasure from me and also from, from Raul Cerezo that cannot be here with me, but he's really happy to have this space with you and share our work with, uh, with the American audience. Let's see what happens when it will release in VOD, that I think it's the place where we can have more audience. And I mean, we are really happy uh, with the release in the States because we are receiving like the best reviews ever of the movie from the States. It's crazy when we enter in Letterbox. Raul is like um, Sherlock Holmes of internet <laughs> and he bring me everything because he shares the passenger. It's like, uh, like be better than Google searching <laughs> things. And, and we read every comment that came out from our movie. Then it's nice that uh, we, we are having a very good critics from reviews from the states, and it's it's a pleasure. I love that it's a fun one, and I think people are really going to enjoy it uh, on demand here. So I'm excited for people to check it out because it's disgusting. Like I said, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's very okay, well. slimy. It's very gooey. People are very lubed up. There's a lot of lot of just like goo happening here, and I'm always for that. <laughs> Tasting, tasting, tasting good. Tasting. Yeah, and it's, it. it's, it's, it's a smelly one, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah. When, when, when we release the 4D experience. Yes, yes. I'm going to wear a be... mask. I'm going to wear a mask in that one. <laughs> again? A mask again? No, please. <laughs> no, thank you. Just me, because I'm a little, I'm a little apprehensive about the nest, the nest smell. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Fernando, thank you so much. Everyone, check out The Passenger.